Hey everybody, it's me checking in. Uh, gonna do a, another logging video today. Uh, this one's gonna actually be off the big trailer. Uh, it's a little bit different. I've done one in the past. I, I actually used a small trailer before. Uh, this trailer I'm using today to my big gooseneck. It's a triple axle, a 35 foot trailer. Uh, and I've actually got my Bobcat on right now. I'm pulling close to 14,000, 15,000 pounds. So it's a little bit different setup. If any of you guys are thinking about kind of going to the next level, uh, getting the bigger logs and stuff, maybe you know, you're working on houses like I am or whatever, or you just need a little bit more production, this is the next step up before you get into actually owning a logging truck. So uh, if you're thinking about doing something like this, uh, you know, there's a lot of numbers and stuff that you need to consider uh, as far as being safe because pulling loads like this actually can be kind of dangerous. Actually, it can be really dangerous if given the conditions or just, you know, other drivers and being aware of how much weight you're pulling and how fast you can stop and stuff like that. So uh, before I get into the actual log and stuff, I'll just kind of run through those numbers and give you an idea uh, what you should be looking for. First of all, anytime you're going to be pulling this much weight, uh, number one thing is having a vehicle that can do it. This truck is kind of custom built. Uh, it took me a year and a half to find it. Uh, they're kind of rare now. It's a 04 uh, Dodge 2500, and it's not the dually. I'm, and that's I'm specifically not using a dually because I go off road in this thing. Duallys are not good for two track or off road, off road, narrow spaces, mud. As far as long drives and stuff. Yeah, dually is better uh, for the safety reasons. If one tire goes out, you still have a tire. Uh, it does have a little bit worse mileage with the dually. But this truck is special uh, because, first of all, it's a manual. That's kind of why it took me a year and a half to find it. Uh, it's a six speed. It's got the lower uh, transmission uh, gear ratio on the back end, so it has a ton of torque. Uh, I actually rebuilt the engine on this thing, so it's got a brand new engine in it with a special camshaft from Colt Cams. Uh, it gives a little bit better torque for pulling, and it gives a little bit better gas mileage. So this is a diesel, it's a 5.9 Cummins. It, it dynos when it's brand new at about three, 304 horsepower. Uh, this one, because it's got special injectors in it and that Colt Cam, uh, it, it would it would dyno a little bit different. Uh, there's two different two different models in the 04. There's a there's a 304 horsepower and then there's a 325 horsepower I think. So the only reason I'm telling you that is because if you're looking at a truck to do something like this, you need a good truck. Like you need a, a truck that's got enough power to to do this. So this has an exhaust brake on it, which works great with the manual. Uh, it's got a BD aftermarket exhaust that I put into it, uh, turbo exhaust. It's really easy to put on if you know anything mechanical. I mean, uh, it's pretty straightforward. I also have <clears throat> load, assist, load assist airbags in this truck. Uh, they are all aftermarket also. Uh, those are 5K, I believe. I forget who makes them. It's, I think they're about three or $400. Uh, I got the nice ones. These ones have uh, these ones have uh, overload protection. So if your bags aren't inflated, and you for whatever reason you load your you, you load your truck and the bags get compressed too much, there's a damper in there, so you don't blow your bags up. So this has uh, the bags in it, which is really important for hauling these big loads. Uh, before I had the bags, the truck would actually sit uh, at a, a a bad angle and I would have my low lights on at night and people would be flashing me all the time because my lights are going right into their eyes so with the load assist I'm able to actually level the truck out it has I think a three percent rake uh, when it's unloaded it actually says it in the manual I usually just 
inflate my bags to 60 or 70 PSI. I don't really care about the rake. You can actually watch the truck lift up when you inflate the bags. I get about two inches out of the bags and then it compresses down an inch when I load the trailer up. So airbags and exhaust brake are extremely important. You know, I the value, you don't really realize the value until you have it and then you don't have it. I mean, I can, I can go down a 10% grade uh, with my Bobcat with, without touching the, the brakes. So, I mean, that saves a lot on wear and tear uh, with your brakes. Uh, it's good for the truck, the transmission, all that stuff, whatever. So it, it's, it's also a safety factor if for whatever reason, and, and I have this a lot because I have a long bed on this truck, um, the, the trailer cable will sometimes not be connected because I'll um, jackknife the trailer or whatever and it'll wiggle loose a little bit and I'll actually lose my trailer brakes. So if you don't have an exhaust brake uh, and you're, you're pulling a grade, you're coming down a grade or whatever and your trailer brakes go out, uh, you're gonna be in trouble. But with the exhaust brake, you just flip that on and you can get everything in control, slow down, pull over, fix the cable, whatever, you're good to go. So the other thing is this is a gooseneck. So inside the back of my truck box, is a, uh, I think it's a B&W uh, gooseneck, gooseneck adapter so I can flip the ball one way or the other if I'm pulling the gooseneck or not. This trailer, except for the, the fact that I can feel the weight, it with the gooseneck it pulls super nice and it's really, it's fairly easy. This is a really long trailer it's, but it's fairly easy to back up one of these compared to a bumper pull. So that's another thing to keep in mind. Plus, when you run a gooseneck, um, generally you have higher capacities for the trailer. So the trailer actually distributes some of the weight onto the truck instead of it all being on the trailer. So this one's got, I think I already said it, but it's got, uh, it's got triple axle 7K. So it's rated to, I think, 24,000 pounds. Uh, and that trailer is 9,000 pounds, so we figure out the difference. That's what I can haul on this trailer. Another thing to keep in mind when you get into these weights is depending on the state, uh, you kind of put yourself into uh, a position where you may need a commercial driver's license. In the Midwest, there's a lot of laws in the states here. Uh, Colorado, North Dakota, South Dakota, Montana, Wyoming, Nebraska, Iowa, Minnesota. I know most of them do. They have a, a law with the DOT that says anything under 24,000 or 23,000 pounds, you do not need a class A CDL. Now, a class A CDL, that's with this, if you did have a class A, you wouldn't need air brakes. You would just need a class A restricted. Uh, that's important because if you ever get pulled over uh, by a DOT official, and I have, I learned the hard way. Uh, I thought I was legal. I had some stuff that I had to fix with my license plates. I'll tell you that later, but it's expensive to learn the hard way. So I'm trying to, uh, what I'm telling you now is kind of stuff you need to think about uh, if you want to do this. So uh, it wouldn't hurt to have a, uh, a CDL class A, re unre or restricted or whatever without air brakes, um, yada yada. Look in the rule book, it'll tell you. Just because if they, you know, they don't quite know the rules, like it's a it's a state patrol or something, you know, give them that, they'll be okay, whatever. Um, always be aware of your weights. Uh, if you are pushing that weight threshold and you're overweight for whatever reason, you need to go through a scale, or it is bad. I haven't done it before, but um, it's, it's not fun to be sweating going through scales and then you know if you do get in trouble with being overweight or whatever uh, you're gonna be in you're, it's not good they'll make you disconnect from your trailer they won't let you go any further you have to pay a bunch of fines uh, and probably a whole bunch of other stuff that I don't even know about so yeah that's that for weight when you're when you get when you see how many logs I'm gonna load you'll realize I am pushing that upper threshold uh, in the, the 21 to 23,000. Uh, 
So uh, it is it is a dangerous way to be pulling with a consumer grade vehicle, just because these trucks, while they can pull it, the braking isn't so good. If we had air brakes, if I had air brakes on the trailer and you know whatever, it's a little bit more safer. But anyways, the one other thing I didn't mention about the airbags is that the ride quality, the ride quality is significantly better uh, under load with the airbags. Um, these Dodges are notorious for riding pretty, pretty, pretty heavy, pretty, uh, pretty tight. Um, you put the airbags on there, you get a little bit smoother ride. Uh, it is still pretty jerky. You can probably notice me getting bounced around a little bit, but it does kind of even that ride out. So with that said, I'll kind of move on to what I'm going to be doing today. This is a little bit more intensive than going off the little trailer. Uh, first things first. You're gonna see me unload my Bobcat. Uh, I was doing some work and I need to get this off the trailer in order to be able to log. I'll show you me setting up the, the apparatus that I kind of designed for this. It's not, it's not unique. There's been other people that have done stuff like this, maybe not to this scale, uh, but it, it's, you know, it's pretty straightforward Egyptian type technology. I'm gonna set up the towers. That's what I'm talking about. I'll put the towers up, show you how that kind of works. Uh, and then after that, I'll kind of be on the road to the next, to the trees uh, to do some cutting. So I'm gonna be doing this all by myself today. So uh, it'll be nice to show you that, hey, if you're on your own for whatever reason, you can still, with a design like this, you can still get real big logs on your trailer uh, by yourself and not have to worry about hurting yourself or whatever. Um, it is a little bit harder. You're gonna see with one person, it's in such a long trailer, I have to run back and forth and adjust stuff and everything. But that's it for now. I'll resume with the Bobcat.